Our next guest from the uh, Veterans Administration is Dr. Lawrence Kaminsky, who is with the Million Veteran Program. And Dr. Uh, Kaminsky with the uh, Veterans Administration is a gene bank expert. Dr. Kaminsky, nice to have you with nice us. Nice to be here. What is a gene bank expert? Well, be before I try and answer that question, uh, let me explain a little bit about what we're trying to do uh, in the context of human disease. Okay. So human disease, or most human disease, is really uh, a result of some kind of genetic susceptibility and an environmental trigger. So by that I mean that some defect in an individual's genes could make them susceptible to getting a disease. But until they're exposed to some kind of trigger in the environment, they won't get the disease. Could you explain what, most people know what a gene is, what a gene is and what <coughs> genetic susceptibility is? Okay, so genes of course are uh, what make up our DNA. Our D DNA uh, which essentially governs what we are right. and how we behave uh, is, is broken up into a series of pieces, each of which are called a gene, and the gene's role is to pattern a protein, and the protein will actually be made in the body based on the pattern from the gene, and then will govern how you behave. So it could be an enzyme which would make you uh, behave in a certain way, or could make you have red hair, or bl whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's what the genes are. And genes uh, frequently have changes in them that make uh, each individual's gene slightly different from other people's. And sometimes those changes could make you susceptible to a disease. And if you are susceptible and you do get exposed to something in the environment that could cause that disease, then you would probably get the disease. If you didn't have that change to make you susceptible uh, and you were exposed to that environmental factor, you may not get the disease. And environmental factors could be many different things. They could be uh, viruses, bacteria, chemicals, uh, even stress. So all of these things could trigger a disease, and if you're susceptible, you'll get the disease. One of the things I was not aware of until a few years ago is that Agent Orange, which was used in the Vietnam War, was made in the uh, city of Rensselaer, right across uh, the Hudson River from the city of Albany, and obviously uh, many of our Vietnam veterans um, were impacted by Agent Orange. Those impacted by Agent Orange, obviously it impacts their genes, and would their offspring be impacted by the Agent Orange as well? N not necessarily. That Agent Orange, in, in the case that I'm discussed, describing, would be the trigger. And so if you were susceptible to the effects of Agent Orange, then, then you would have quite severe consequences. But perhaps if you weren't susceptible, then uh, even though you were exposed, you might not have had those health consequences. One it's thing, uh, and this is, my wife is not a veteran, but uh, her grandmother uh, was a chimney, smoked all the time, and she lived to her mid-90s, and unfortunately uh, my wife is a chimney as well, and she has had no impact, so a to a degree what you're saying is that Agent Orange or uh, nicotine from tobacco, someone could not be impacted by, all, by it at all because of their genetics? Right, they may not get lung cancer um, while many others do. What is the uh, purpose of the uh, Million Veteran Program? Okay. So. To be able to determine whether particular changes in one's genes would make you susceptible, uh, you need frequently to have large numbers of people in studies. Getting these large numbers of people sometimes can take years, many years, to, to generate the population that you want to study. What the VA has decided to do is form a bank uh, which w will in effect be the largest gene bank in, in the world. And uh, once that bank is formed with a million samples in it, which is the goal, uh, which should take five to seven years to do, 
one can approach the VA uh, with a proposal to do a study using that sample and the sample would be there and waiting so you wouldn't have to wait years to generate your sample. And why the VA is doing this is because it is particularly well suited to do it. First of all, uh, it has a very large population of patients. Um, it has a uh, an electronic medical record system which is essential for accessing uh, lots of data about each patient. Um, it has a population who by and large are willing to participate in a research program which is not true usually of, of the general population. So the plan now is to collect samples from a million veterans, one blood sample, and we'll extract the DNA from that blood sample uh, and store it, and everything is gonna be stored in Boston. This is a, a massive project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, the size of this is greater than any other that's ever been contemplated. Once these samples are all collected, it, to be able to collect the blood sample from each veteran, we have to consent them. Uh, and so the consenting, uh, or in the process, they will agree to provide us with the blood sample. They will allow us to store that blood sample. They will provide us access to the medical record, which is essential for this project. Um, and they will also allow us to approach them if something very interesting ultimately is found in their blood uh, and we want to ask them further questions. So, so that's what this Million Veteran Program is all about. Um, and it started this year. Uh, to be able to gather a million samples, just to give you some feel for, for what that means. Um, there are going to ultimately be 50 different VAs involved in this, and we're one of the first, uh, and Buffalo is, is also one of the first. Okay. Um, and um, so there are 50 sites, a million samples. If you divide that in, that's 20,000 samples per site. Uh, so we are committed to, to getting 20,000 samples from our veterans. And the people who can apply have to, of course, be veterans and have to be registered at the home hospital, if it's in Buffalo or here or, or at the other 50 sites. Um, so this is a major undertaking. We're uh, doing about 20 um, blood draws a day with 20 new patients a day. Uh, for most of our trials, if we get five patients a year into it, it's a lot. So this is completely different from any other trial that we've undertaken. And the VA has the infrastructure to do this as well. I, I don't think anyone else in the country would be able to do this. So you get about 100 uh, participants a week? Roughly, that's the goal. Right. Uh, and they, they uh, are recruited through uh, Boston, which is the home base for the whole study. Um, they're asked to, to make an appointment with us. They come in. Uh, we explain what the study is about. We consent them. Uh, and then we draw one sample of blood. Uh, there's a little survey they have to do describing their uh, day to day behavior as it could affect their health. Uh, and that's it for each one of them, unless at some stage we found something and go back to them. How is this uh, genetic uh, research helpful to our women and uh, male veterans in the United States? And also, are you, uh, is it age sensitive or is any uh, demographic? Eligible? No, no, the beauty of a gene defect is, is once you're born with this, then you have it continuing through your lifespan. So it doesn't really it. matter where you, when you draw the blood. Um, the, the one problem in this whole big study, uh, which we've been alluded to earlier this, this morning, is that the bulk of the veterans are still males. Mm -hmm. To make this gene bank truly representative of the whole veteran pop population, we need to, to recruit as many females as possible into the study. And in fact, we need to, to emphasize female recruitment more than male because we'll get lots of males but we we need to really emphasize female recruitment to try and get their numbers up because the results that we get from the study should be representative uh, of, of the whole population of veterans now for women and male veterans uh, watching the show today 
can they uh, volunteer and go to their uh, local VA hospital to participate? Or Yes, I think this is the main reason I'm sitting here, okay. to appeal to them to please do that. Uh, we are we are very desirous that it, virtually every veteran in the area participate in so this. So you don't study. have to wait for Boston to contact you? No, no, no. Uh, if, if you're coming into the VA for some kind of clinical service and you have a few minutes, uh, we'd love them to come up and see us. We have signs all over. Uh, and uh, we'll get them to volunteer and participate. Does this genetic uh, information that you uh, folks gather, does it remain uh, confidential for our women and male veterans? Absolutely. The VA uh, is very, very careful with all clinical data uh, and particularly genetic data of any of, of the veterans. Uh, so we have enormous uh, safeguards put into place to ensure that their uh, privacy as well as the, imp the, the security of the data that we collect is secure and uh, we, we go to great lengths to ensure that.